Let me start off with a disclaimer that although the automated logic OEM control equipment touch display used in this video is typical to all sold, it is the custom screens that are unique to the unit it is hooked up to. All screens are customized per project and may be different from what yours looks like. What will be similar is how you maneuver inside a screen and between a screen as well as how you make changes to points that are adjustable. Please enjoy. This display allows you to see and modify what is going on with your unit. This is a display only and has nothing to do with the operation of your unit beyond being able to access operating values and set points. Let's take a minute and look around through the home screen. From this screen, you will be able to see a few key temperatures along with the time and date. Another key piece of information is the job name and factory order number which you will need to give to the service department if calling for assistance. Pressing the home symbol will take you back to the screen at any time. The back arrow will return you to the previous screen you were viewing. The red exclamation point indicates that an alarm is present. Let's talk about the alarm button for a minute, which you will find at the top banner line of every screen we use. Pressing the button takes you to the alarm page as shown here. Here you will see the list of active alarms. If the descriptor given is unclear, contact the Seasons Forest Service Department for help or ask for a job specific list. To acknowledge the active alarms and turn the red light off, press the back arrow button on the banner line and then press clear active. Once you cleared you can now look at the manually cleared by pressing its button or use the back arrow or home button to get back to the main screen. You can see how the alarm exclamation point is no longer red. There is a menu button and help button. Let's maneuver around by pressing the help button. You should now see a screen with information on how to get help when troubleshooting your unit. Press the home symbol to go back to the main screen. Press the menu button. Here you will see two columns one for all the screens pertinent to the operation and the second column pertinent to the integration and setup screen. Let's start off by setting the clock. Press the button for module setup. Press the button for set time and date. Select the time button allows you to adjust the clock as needed. Press done when finished, if the date needs to be changed, select that button. Select the correct date and press Done when finished. Press the back arrow symbol twice to return to the main menu screen. On the right side of the screen, you will see the scroll bar that will allow you to see items further down the screen. Just put your finger on the slider and slide down or up as needed. Let's go to the unit status page. Your choice of hitting next or enter. On the unit status page, we try to show all the information needed to see what is going on with your unit on one page. And yes, there is a lot of information. As you scroll down the page, See the up and down arrows on the right side indicating more lines up or down? You will see the fan operating statuses, maybe the operating status of the unit, heat and cool calls if it is a multi-zone unit, as well as a run 24-7 checkbox that will turn the unit on as long as it's enabled. Again, this page contains a lot of information, but from it you should be able to see how your unit is operating. 
Notice the check boxes that allow you to turn on off features of the control logic. On the right side of the screen you will see the scroll bar that will allow you to see items further down the screen. Just put your finger on the slider and slide up or down as needed. At the bottom of the screen you will find a box you can select to archive the database. Whenever changes are made to the database, i.e. set point changes, they are stored in volatile memory that is lost if the power has been off for more than three days. If you check the box to archive, then the control will take the volatile memory and write them to the permanent archive. So after a power interruption of three days or longer, the controller will restart with the latest archive values. Press the back arrow. Press any of the buttons under the unit info header to see how your unit is operating. Let's try the zones button, then select zone 1. This is a typical zone page showing the zone number and the current hot deck and cold deck temperatures and all the pertinent information about the zone. Notice the values that are inside the boxes that can be adjusted. To adjust a value, simply touch the value, input the new value, and press down if you want to keep the new value or cancel to leave without making any change. While here, let's talk about how the zone set points are determined. For each zone you have a base set point, an occupied and unoccupied dead band, and a thermostat slider amount. Zone set point adjustment at the stat. Each dead band creates a span that creates a zone heating and cooling set point. The span is the occupied and unoccupied set points with the base set point in the middle. For example, if the base set point is 72 and the occupied dead band is 4 degrees, the zone cooling set point would be 74 degrees and the heating one would be 70 degrees. The adjustment multiplier multiplies the slider adjustment, if applicable, which creates an offset from the base set point. Let's hit the back arrow button a couple of times to return to the main menu screen. Schedules. Let's select that. When you select schedules, you arrive at this screen. On this screen you can see the current schedule status. Not every project uses the schedules in the unit and depend on the schedules found in your front end system. Let's add a new schedule by pressing the green plus button. Give the schedule a name or use the default. Then select the type of schedule, date, weekly, or continuous. For our example, let's pick weekly, then press the next button. Set the start, stop, and days you want the schedule to be active. Notice the on or off on the top right part of the screen that shows the active status of this schedule. When happy with what the screen says, press the save button. If you want to delete a schedule, then select one of the days it is active, then select the schedule and then delete, then delete all, then OK. If you have a front-end energy management system or BAS system and you want the unit to follow the front-end schedule and not the schedules in the controller, then we need to delete all of the schedules. Then the BAS can write to the BAS remote enable point and toggle it from yes to know as needed to start and stop the unit. Hit the home button when finished with schedules. Press the menu button and scroll down to the PID parameters selection. 
The PID parameters found in these screens are the heart of your control system and should be modified with care. A simple number change can make your unit work differently than factory programmed. It is advised that to consult with the Seasons 4 factory if tuning is required. Press the menu button, then module setup. Let's select router. The settings on this and subsequent pages should only be made after consulting with the factory. This screen allows for the selection for the communications protocol for the unit. Zero out the communications protocol you are not using and then put the desired network number into the protocol that you are using. Hit the back arrow button when finished. Go ahead and press the IP hot button and let's see what's on that page. If your facility is using BACnet IP instead of BACnet MSTP, then the current IP address, subnet, and gateway tell you what the controller is currently using. If using BACnet IP, then use the assigned IP address, subnet, and gateway to input your desired network information. After the information is entered, press Save, then switch number 2 on the IO Pro controller. We'll need to be switched to the left on. After cycling power, return to this page to ensure that the current IP address information reflects what you just input for the custom address settings. Again, it is highly advised to consult with the factory before making these changes. Press the back arrow button and select Communications. This is another screen that before changes are made, the factory should be consulted. If your network needs this device to have a specific device instance number, then set the Auto generate device ID to no, and then modify the top line to whatever value you need. Select previous several times to get back to the main menu. In the main screen, go down to the bottom of the left column. On many of our screens, there is an I.O. page. Accessing it requires a password, but these screens contain a lot of information that we would prefer you to contact us before accessing. This page will bring up a new page with at least two more buttons on it, one for inputs, one for outputs. Both pages will show the physical inputs and outputs wired into the controller, their current values, and any override lock that may be enabled on them. In addition, the newer touchscreens may have a setting in which sensor types can be changed in case customers want to change the type of sensors they have installed in their units in the field. Again, please contact us before making any changes in these screens. These are all the screens for this specific unit, but as stated before, your screens may be different, or you may even have more or less screens, but maneuvering around the screens and making value changes are the same. Thank you for watching, and remember you can always call the Seasons 4 Service Department for assistance.